Hello and welcome back to the channel, it's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice 1 to 1. Today we are installing another Hypervolt. This one's going to be focused on the setting up of the software after we've installed the Hypervolt and also some of the surveying you might need to consider when you are carrying out an EV charge point installation. If I just show you what we've got over here. So we've got a Hypervolt ready to go, we've got the steel template so that helps us with setting out the markings and it'll become apparent why in the video that these are actually really useful if you haven't got yourselves one as yet recommend spending a bit of money on the Hypervolt order form and getting yourself a steel template because if you've got a wall surface that's a surface that's not absolutely flat it's quite difficult with the cardboard sometimes to get those marked out so we find it easier with a template but yeah other than that i'm not going to waffle on too much at the start of the video we'll get out to site we'll go and get the install on the way we're going to show the installation of the circuit down to the charge point get it on the wall what we've done in and around the consumer unit and then we're going to have a bit more of a customer focused chat about how you would set up the app and some of the things that it can do um, to control the charge point once it's in use catch up with you in a bit Okay, so when you're serving an EV charge point, you need to be making sure that your main service head is of a suitable rating. You can also check that with the DNO as well, that you have got um, an isolating switch on the tails if you're needing to make an addition of another consumer unit. Um, and equally that your basics, such as your bonding and earthing, is all in place. And then obviously the cable route from where the an intake position is so obviously here we've got an external meter cabinet with the consumer unit backing straight onto it um, out to the charge point which is just past this gate here um, so obviously we can run externally as i'm going to show you in this video but you need to make sure you survey all that so you know the length of cable that you're going to need if there's any lifting of furniture or any disruption with inside the house if you don't have a simple external route but i'll show you the consumer unit as well and some of the other checks we need to make there matthew's just on with the hyper vault uh, we are doing one of the black ones today, so we'll show you some of that as well. It's going the other side of this gate, so you can see it's got that on the wall there, as is at the minute. Um, it's a bit of a tricky one, this one, because it's these stones which are on a flush flat surface, but we're making the best of it. We're going to get that as neat as we can. You'll see with the meter boxes, they've had the same sort of trouble um, getting those to sit flush on the wall. And the same with these fan grill plates up here. It's just a tricky surface to, surface to fix to, but we'll get on with that. Um, basically our cable run is going to run along this wall here. We should be able to punch out this side of the gas pipe work so we won't be in any interference with that. I think to get the cables looped across these because we've got the telecoms, main power and gas all close together. There is on the other side of this wall as I'll show you some water pipes as well so we need to be a little bit careful drilling through. And then we can follow one of the brick mortar lines across through that gate and up into the hyper vault. I'll show you inside. So this is the consumer unit and main um, supply for this house. It is a big property so we've got a double stacked Wilex board. See there is an SPD in there. They are type A RCDs so that's useful but we are going to use an RCVO of our own anyway. Um, there's room in this bottom section here where we can take a blank out, fit an RCV onto the DIN rail and wire it off the main supply. So yeah, and it gives its own individual protection and we're not putting these at any risk of operating when the oven's on for example alongside the charge point it's always a consideration these are already reasonably well loaded so whilst it's not an issue with blowing the main service fuse because we've got the load limiting from the hyper vault you know it could be a factor of taking out one of those rcds the tails pass through the wall here you see the glanded into the bottom of the board um, i think our our hole's going to be just to the side this here so you can see where the gas passes straight through that wall into the gas meter outside and just down there gives us a little place we can punch through and then draw our cable up and across and into this consumer unit that's the plan we'll see how that comes together obviously there's quite a bit of pipe work down there we could hit so we need to be careful um, but looking at it that should work out quite nicely then we just got to get a route from there up into this consumer unit so we'll get on with that and I'll show you how the video moves along. And again, when you're surveying, as I just mentioned, checking for stuff like SPDs, if there's spare ways in the board, if you've got type A ICDs, if you're going to use existing split load boards or, or room to put um, your own RCBO on. 
and I'll show you inside this consumer unit when we come to wire it up later on in the video. So again you can see that's where the gas pipe passes through that wall. If you look down here we're clear of the main gas pipe, the water pipes are all there. And we've got a little glue here with this gas bonding cable that's been drilled through so we can look for that on the other side as well, see if we can see that anywhere. And that gives us another idea that we're in a safe place to drill through neatly as possible and get on with our cable route down to the charger. We'll go and get on with that now. Perfect. Okay, so this is inside the existing consumer unit. It doesn't look horrific. You'll see the setup here. The, the tails enter through the bottom, run up the back of the board into this main switch. It's got double screw terminals, that's nice. And out the bottom of the main switch, that loops into the SPD and also loops into these two RCDs as well, which are looking after a few circuits each. Um, we're going to bring our cable in. Decided to bring it up the side here. I'm going to have to cross the trunk in as much as I don't like it and then land it into the side of this board here and we'll just drop an RCBO um, type A and it'll be the double pole Wilex ones. So that's nice. And then we can uh, get that all set up and wired in and I'll show you the finished product in a minute. Okay, so there you can see our cable brought through. We just need to do a bit of hoovering up in here. Um, I've tried to keep it away from the gas pipe as much as we can. There is a gap there coming across. It's tied in nice and straight to the trunk in and then landed in the side of this CU. It's just a bit cramped for space, whichever way you look at it, you know, you're going to be coming around and past something. I think that's about the best we could do in that circumstance. It's a ramp type A with um, the neutral bin switched. That's good enough for us and I'll speak about that a little bit later on in the video. That's all coming off this main switch, so you'll have seen inside that the um, tails going over to the RCDs are looped straight off the bottom of the main switch. So I've come off that the clamp meter on here while the customer's using the install and same as ever it's quite low usage um, obviously the way these circuits are divided there is potential there for an issue but i don't think we're ever going to see one um, so we're, we're all good there and as always the hypervolts set for the load limiting the ct clamps on inside this consumer unit so that's all um, on the line you can put that on the neutral as well actually just to mention you just have to put it in the opposite direction it will still monitor the, the current bin consumed and obviously stop the main service fuse from blowing but we'll have a look outside and see what we've done out there. Just putting the handle on for the hypervolt down there, the um, holder, holster, whatever you want to call it. So our cable scooped out here, we're well away from any of the gas services or anything like that. We're coming straight along this brick line. It's as neat and tidy as possible. We've had to go for cleats on this. Um, getting the, the Linean super clips in wasn't that easy in the mortar. It's a bit soft and um, the brickwork's a bit too uneven. So we've had to go with cleats and the um, concrete screws just to get a nice fixing in. Passes behind the back of the gate and then loops up into the hypervolt. And we just need to get this sorted out at this end and then I'll show you the app been set up and how it all comes together at the end so you can program up the app um, for your charger and have a fiddle with the lights and stuff and get it on the Wi-Fi. We'll show that in a minute on a bit of a screen record on the old iPad. Just to mention this has come into its own today. So the Milwaukee light on the pack out system if you've not tried that before. Um, I did do a special video on it that I'll link in the description of this one. But essentially it clips onto your pack out system the same way all the other stuff does and you've got a usb charger in there it works off battery or mains voltage it does come with a 110 um, lead on it but it does work off uh, uk mains voltage you just need to change the plug you get a couple of lights on the ends like this that swivel about and then there's one main light just on this side here that's tucked away um, nice big light on there and obviously it depends what batteries you have in as to how long it lasts and if you're plugged into the mains it does charge your batteries up at the same time so a nice little um, nice little light fitting different modes set the torch up different that in there for your main power button this is the main big light on the front and these swivel all the way around so you can cast light everywhere it's really good so i've been in that little cupboard today and that's been very useful um, but yeah, we'll have a look at the, the app been set up now and I'll show you the commissioning and the fault. We've shown the testing before, so I'm not going to go through that. So this is me just playing around with the app and the hypervolt. You can see I am having a little flick through some of the LED modes. So there's some quite funky different settings you can switch up on these. So this is the disco mode. If you're having a little party down the side of your house or you want the Halloween effect for when the kids might be coming out trick-or-treating. You've got Union Jack in there as well. There's a few other different settings, and then you can just leave it on, on no setting if you want. 
you can also adjust the brightness so if you want that set down a little bit lower so it's a little less obvious you can do that as well and loads of other features from within the app so you can dictate the current limit as well from within the app itself um, there's also a manual switch inside the hypervolt to preset that you can lock the charge points if you don't want anybody else using it while you're not at home you can make sure that's only accessible to people in your household just through the app fantastic piece of software um, best on the market in my opinion and a great solution so that they can see it down the wall it's all powered up tested commissioned i showed you the app i couldn't show you setting it up because you have to put the wi-fi password in and such but the app itself is really straightforward you come close up to the charger it'll find it automatically put your wi-fi code in it'll then connect and you can start to control it lock it change the lights into all those funky modes um, that i showed on the little clip just now these are brilliant they will monitor your usage you can lock them via the app so nobody can come up and use your charge point when you're not at home and yeah i think we've got that looking quite nice and tidy now we've just got to get the paperwork in order show the customer around the job and um yeah there we are okay so as you will have seen we have installed that charge point successfully out at the site the app's now in use um with the customer they're happy with the job we've signed it all off as complete and got the ozev claim in as well um, some of the key things you will need for that if you are going through the Ozev system you're going to need the MPAN number from the customer's electricity bill or meter you're going to need to know um, that there's a driveway there with photographic evidence of such and the vehicle details and that it qualifies for the Ozev grant along with all the basics such as customer address details and the electrical certification. Now you will have seen that I used an RCBO on that install. Some installers don't like that. They prefer to use um, a 6108, so an RCD, um, just because of the requirement in the regulations to provide disconnection of both the line and neutral when the RCD operates. I'll show you when this is the um, electric vehicle charging equipment installation, fourth edition, which references into the regulations. And you'll see here, it talks about um, RCD selection installation and it basically says each um, charge point needs to be protected by 30 milliamp RCD, appropriate selected for the nature, the residual fault currents expected and comply with BSEN 61008, so that's your typical double pole RCDs, and then your 61009s, which is your RCBOs. It says there in the regulations 722.531.3.1 RCDs shall disconnect all live conductors now that's the thing people out so you'll know from a Hager RCBO for example that it doesn't break the neutral it's a solid neutral um, some of the other manufacturers are the same I've said before that the Elusian ones um, open the neutral as well they don't in fact Darren Staniforth confirmed that to me I was misunderstanding the wording um, on that one so that was my bad but the Wilex ones and Electrium ones do break the neutral so that's um, they're called SPSN, so single pole switch neutral. Some reference them as double pole. Um, so the M2 board we've got over there that's going on a domestic job next week, they're actually referenced as double pole. I think that's to do with, it's just a terminology issue. So um, for true double pole, I think you need overcurrent protection on the neutral as well, so it's not polarity sensitive like an RCD, um, you know, an E6108s. But essentially, it does disconnect the neutral. And there may be a millisecond difference in the way that happens, so it probably breaks the line first and then the neutral, and then the opposite way around when you're repositioning that into the on position, it probably connects the neutral slightly before the line. Would be my very basic understanding of what's going on there. But I'm happy with the 61009s as long as they are switch neutral. In here, it does actually reference them. You know, they are spoken about within the regulations. You've also got issues of your selectivity. So if you've got um, RCDs in series, you need to make sure that you are um, having some selectivity on them and that you're choosing the right type of RCD um, or RCBO based on the charge point you're installing. So for a hypervolt, we just need type A, um, which is just the six milliamps of smooth direct current um, where it's, it's capable of handling that and still being able to operate correctly whereas a type ac can the other common one you might use is the type b um they're ones that you all on an anderson ev charge point for example so there is a little bit of consideration there your electrician should uh, consider that when they're carrying out the design and the installation that's one of the things that as a consumer you need to be aware of a lot of these times um installations that are carried out not enough thoughts put into the RCD protection and ultimately that's there to keep you safe. Same with any pen fault detection that could be needed with certain charge points. 
um, the Urzev report on the quality of the installations that have been done so they go out and audit some of these is not very good. They're finding a lot of installations that do not comply with the intent of the regulations and they're having issues with the installer networks um, off the back of that. So they go out and audit these and then they're put back for corrective works and the percentages, you know, they're, they're alarmingly high. So it's really important that you select a contractor who is going to look after your safety because that's what those devices do. They're not there to make the EV charge point function in a better way or be more energy efficient or anything like that. It's purely protective measures. So if there is an issue with the electric charging in the vehicle or in the charge point itself or the wider installation, that it's going to operate a protective device correctly and keep you safe. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. If you um, want to comment, Anything else about the video, get involved. I love that. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Let me know what you think of the content and I will see you all in the next one. Catch you later.